So y'all, I have to apologize. I have been, I don't want to say busy. I want to say tired and overwhelmed and life. Um, so I have not came to you sooner. And so I apologize for that. Um, okay. So I want to talk, I don't think that there's technically anything large in this. Um, in Love and Marriage Detroit but I do think that Latoya and now, you know let me pause here because I should have done this before but I need to remind myself who are sorority sisters because I know that you know sometimes some of y'all in the comments um uh on love and marriage Detroit. Um see, she's an AKA. I I told y'all. Um Latoya, her name on Instagram is LMT1908. She is downright I, I can spot a sore. But I know that she is on the first episode, she was a sorority sister with um Latoya. Who are who is in a sorority or in love and marriage with her? Because if I'm not mistaken, I think it's Kobe and Latoya um that are sorority sisters and I say this because to me it makes a lot more sense because she side she's because she's going to okay um, okay sorry y'all um, because I do think that this is a, a significant in how this plays out. I do listen to Bondi Blue's show and because I'm a huge fan, right? But the issue, and I agree with her by saying that Latoya is, is the more reasonable one and she doesn't like this type of drama. I think that me and Latoya operate very similarly, similarly. But I, I am going to say that I despise the statement of sisterliness. I don't like it. Right, yeah, I, I don't like the notion of constantly being reminded that this is not sisterly. Um, but I will say that it does tilt your vision and I know for a fact that my, if I look at someone as a young, because Kobe is 30. And so I look at somebody in my organization, I am going to be a little bit more, I don't want to say, I don't think the Latoya was being biased, but I'm definitely going to be like, I, I'm going to be more concerned. Um, sorry about that. I I I I will block out because we're trying to plan a play trip. Okay, a trip to the theater. So I think that Latoya has had this premise, and she seems like an older sister. When I in the sorority, you want to be this older sister, and and especially if you pledged in college, but it seems like she has. Uh, we're going to have this depiction that, you know, because I, she's about my age, I am over 20 years in a sorority, so I'm not as high strung 
about it as I say as a younger person but I also am and I think that this is also like Kobe if Kobe is an AKA which I think she is too I am absolutely going to hold a little bit more of a task like she's a first of all I'm going to show up at the event because I do feel that I had I would have a little bit more loyalty um and I think I do think it's a little interesting though that the only time that we even hear about the soul so so I'm gonna have to go back and look it up because I if I could swear that her and Kobe are in the same sorority I do not believe that Christina is and um and if that is and to me that would change a different dynamic to where she's going to hold her to task a little bit by saying this is not this is not gonna work out but I I I appreciate that Latoya and Anthony sat there and tried to ex tried to get some reasoning here with Brandon and Christina. Clearly, it wasn't going to work. Um, and how this is what I'm going to tell you what really took took me for the loop, and I agree. Um, sorry about that, y'all. Uh, what is what is most important is um when she said Christina said that Christina made a comment that no Brandon said that she's copying after me, and Latoya clocked that immediately and was like, wait a second. You for Brandon to say that that means that you have shared something with Brandon to make him conclude make that conclusion. Um, uh, make that conclusion that is not, uh, and I think that is a legit argument because. There's no way, like, if, I mean, I'm going to pillow, we all pillow talk. So there's going to be a pillow talk conversation here. And Kobe, and she clocked the fact that she didn't go after Kobe. And that lets me know if you friends, then you going to, you know, go after it. But I hear her on that, but I also know that I may not be more willing to go after somebody if I am upset so if christina is but then if christina is not upset then she should go after her. but cold but and i did appreciate how latoya and anthony came out there and gave hugs or whatever and i know that people were were have been making comments about how anthony is responding and i look i think that anthony's reasoning is on point in two ways number one latoya is tired of every time they go somewhere, Brandon's joined. Brandon and Co Brandon and Christina stuff is running over. Number one. So she's tired of it. And so when she gets fed up, she's gonna tell her husband, look, this ain't gonna work anymore. And that means that this is dead. This conversation is dead. You need to figure this out. And what does that mean for him? It means that you need to get this this ish together. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Number two, number two is that he's like, look, I'm seeing how you're treating. Our mutual friends, Russell and Kobe. And you are going after Russell's wife in a way. Now, irony is that Brandon allows anybody to go after his wife. But see, the thing is, is that Russell is not going to allow any, and I'm going to be honest, Anthony is not going, Russell and Anthony are not going to allow Brandon to come after uh, their wives. And I think Brandon's argument here is this, and without him saying it, 
why do y'all care if I talk about your wife, wives, when I let you talk about mine? And I'm going to tell you the difference, Mr. Brandon. To some level, they respect their wives. And you want them to speak for you. The problem, Brandon, is that you, sir, should not let other grown men speak to your wife this way. How about that? So Kobe's up here. So I, I, I don't feel anything for it. So for Brandon, Brandon, this whole episode is acting dumb. He's acting really ridiculous by saying I don't understand what the problem is he don't get why Russell wants to break him in half and says it's not that serious he doesn't get why um why Anthony doesn't want to do business with him because he's like look if you willing to mistreat and antagonize Russell this way then I'm gonna let you know that I can't do business with you and I'm gonna tell you this because not only would you get away with trying to pull this stunt on Latoya, but and backstab him for sure and throw him under the bus. But what he also is clocking is that Latoya will not let him live it down if you treat his if you if he lets you treat if he if Anthony lets Brandon treat her the way that Brandon treated Kobe. And that's just it is what it is. And you know what bothers me about this is that Christina, I didn't like the fact that Kobe was like, like Christina is like 40 years old. I'm not clocking that too much. But I will say I did not like the fact of how Christina is not realizing that when she's saying it's not that big of a deal what I don't understand about Christina is that which I do kind of understand because I did listen to her interview on Carlos King and she's has a history of abusive relationships so she's used to being mistreated and I know that the other men are have their issues but when you are in a situation where you're not used to being mistreated then any level of mistreatment is going to set you off I'm going to tell you this I can go down the laundry list of the man that I've dated for sure that didn't sound nice but I'm going to say I've had different men that I've dated and those that have I've been in more serious dating situationships or had an actual relationship or even had gotten married to, which is only one. Sorry, I've only gotten married to one, but I've had other situationships and I've had other relationships. And even my male, close male friends, none of them would talk to me the way that Brandon talked to Kobe. None of them would talk to me the way that Anthony spoke to Christina on the first episode. Okay. And I've had situ you know and I really want to think back and even though all of them have had their problems including my husband we've had our disagreements all of them has had a level of respect for me even when things had not gone well and I've had my and I can go down and be like this was not cool the way that you treated me and this this and this this but all of them had a level of respect for me that a sense of protection to where they would not let me be mistreated 
in this way. And the fact that Christina feels comfortable in Brandon mishandling in Brandon's definition of protection is more revealing of how she's used to dysfunctional relationships. Because when I was younger, no, and even now, if there is a glimmer of dysfunction, I mean, I would, I would do stuff like I'd have a guy call me and we're supposed to be going on and we're supposed to be going out and I was in the middle of something. And so I was busy and he would tell me, this one guy was like, so call me, I need for you to call me back in point zero zero, you know, however many minutes exactly on the dot. Because I, you know, I expect you to do this, this, and this. And I was like, okay, it's been 22 years. He did not get that phone call back. Because what you're not going to do is you're not going to talk to me that way. Okay? Or I had another person who called me who, and I happened to see him out. Um, he was in Omega, actually. And he called, um, and I was watching the Roy Jones fight uh, years ago when Roy Jones lost. Anyway, that's my point. Uh, one of his last fights. I was watching the fight, and I'm in the middle of like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, she got knocked out. And he's like, you need to call me when I can have your full focus. When things are, are best for you, because you're you're busy, you're too involved. And you have to give all of your attention to me. And I was like, okay. And he never heard from me again. Because what you're not going to do is give me any glimmer of something that is a mistreatment that is going to be something that will be in the future. I don't do mistreatment. I've had clients who have talked to me crazy who tell me that they're going to, that uh, men, that I need to do X, Y, and Z. I was like, what I am, what you are going to do is you're not going to talk to me this way. I'd be like, I don't do business with you. And they're like, well, we can, and they want to throw money at, give me more money. No, 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 I don't do business with you. What you're not going to do is you're not going to belittle me. You're not going to mistreat me. You're not going to mishandle me because my uncles did not mishandle me when I was growing up. The men in my life that I've shared friendships, just dating situationships, they did not mishandle me when it comes to interacting with me and talking to me. Even in a disagreement, you're not going to mishandle me. You're not going to yell and berate me. That's what you're not going to do. Because what you don't, you don't want me to do that to you. And for somebody who's supposed to protect me, that's what you're not going to do. So the fact that Brandon doesn't get the fact that Russell and Anthony has a problem with it, and they're not willing to want to interact with you on a professional level because of it and the fact that Russell came to him point blank and said what you're not going to do is I don't want to be around you I don't want to be around your wife I don't want you around my wife I don't want your wife around my wife and he doesn't get that is meaning that you two are used to dysfunctional relationships where you handle each other however you want to and the rest of us are, and, 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 the, and so that when, if he, and then you also, Brandon, allow anybody to mishandle your wife, however you want to, because I'm, because I am a Latoya where even when Anthony was doing too much with um, Christina, she was putting her arm and she was in her own way, like, you're doing too much. And I guarantee times 20 on 20 that when they got into the car, she was just like, sir, we're not doing this. 
And then the next time when we're at the wine tasting, it's like, sir, this is not happening. So it's clear that Latoya is like, that ain't happening. And I respect Latoya on that front because she's not trying to embarrass and check her husband in person in public. And I can respect that to an extent, even though this is a reality show. So um, I, that's what I'm saying. And I don't get now Brandon having a interracial relationship, having a white mother, I think says it all. Um, because especially when we get into um, when we get to the men's meeting and there have and the men are having this conversation about what needs to be done, what they're going to help for the community and everything. And Brandon's like, I don't understand anything. What's going on? Who are we talking to? And I was just like, huh. So it say that you were not raised around the black community without saying it. Because that's essentially what you're telling us. You were not raised amongst black folks. And it's pretty clear that your father probably mistreat your mother. And she was docile about it, which is something that Christina has already kind of mentioned already on that Carlos King interview about his mother being very docile. Essentially, this is what we're, we're understanding. And it's fascinating that you don't grasp what they're trying to do for the community. When I tell you that I don't understand any of this, it doesn't make me... It does his reaction and his lack of understanding of the community is stunning to me. And it really lets, but at the same token, like I told you, I think I mentioned this before when I dated a guy who was raised by his white mom and his, he was raised more with his white mom, but he still had connections with his dad. And I went to his family reunion. His family reunion was adorable loved his grandmother on his father's side and the thing is is that as much as him and I dated multiple different times in our lives um he's married to a white woman now and I think that fits because the one issue there's a lot of little things that we absolutely did not see eye to eye on and some of it was church because even though he was around his father's side of the family that was absolutely in church absolutely was you know a very southern family but that wasn't his day-to-day -day. he was raised with his mother and his father I mean and he even though he became an alpha it did not, and he had community in him. Like, it's not that he didn't. It's just that it didn't seem like it was the best of it. Whereas I was not raised around white people at all. Like, and so this would have been, as the different times that we tried it, and even when the last time that we tried was, um, before I met my husband, for sure, like a couple of years before I met my husband. Um, it, it, well, I don't want to say a couple of years, I would say about a year. And it just didn't work simply because even though we had so much in common, it was the, we really lived in a part of different worlds. And that's what I think about Brandon. Like there's there's a lot of explanation that has to come. And it's like, I am tired. And I mean, I give Christina kudos, but I don't think that it's enough. 
because I don't think that she has it in her to explain to her what's appropriate and what's not appropriate, especially since she comes from this type of violetal background. Um, so he has no idea what's happening. And so I was just like, I don't understand why he don't understand. And then when he does talk to Christina about how Russell feels, she doesn't understand why it's that big of a deal. And then she just feels like, I didn't want to go to the party anyway, but I can't believe I'm uninvited. And which I don't necessarily understand that reaction because you would have been there. And if you didn't want to go, then then why would you want to go anyway? Like, why would you have to be uninvited? So you were going just, what, for a check? That's fine. Um, Brandon, Bravo, and Anthony kind of come together. Bravo's trying to figure out what's the tension between it. Brandon. It's going to come to a head next week because essentially what Brandon's trying to undermine and tell Anthony is that you haven't been, that I'm the person with the talent and music industry is me. And Anthony is like, wait a second, I've been working with record labels. Does, do I have gray hair? No, I don't. It just feels like maybe it's because of the, um, maybe I need to change my, stop the blur background. No, that ain't it. It just feels like I'm getting white all around here. Maybe I'm stressing. I don't know. That's not the point. Anyway, <clears throat> Bravo. Um, okay. So, and it comes to the point that when Anthony comes and sits down with Christina and Brandon, he's like, look, I don't trust you. And I, I hate that Brandon is going to try to undermine Anthony by saying, well, we don't know what you do. We don't even know what you do. Like, and so then now you're going to make it feel like Anthony has to run down his resume. I struggle with that. And um, I don't know. This show is such a trigger but it's a very interesting show and um um I did see Anthony's Carlos King interview and I did think it was interesting to kind of go down his history and seeing how what he has done for a living um which I think is really a good thing which is which is really an interesting thing he's been in entertainment for for quite a few for for a very long time um and uh so I think that that's an interesting one I do think that next week when Anthony's like look your company's made no stars <laughs> oh my gosh Anthony is so funny it's hard to not like Anthony, even though he's ridiculous. But anyway, on that note, I will see y'all later. And I apologize for being late. I will do Real Housewives ooh, of Atlanta. Uh, I think I'm going to have to do it on Thursday. Because Wednesday, I'm going to a play. I may be able to do it on Wednesday. But for sure on Thursday. Bye.